Hello again and welcome to Classic Golf Clubs. We made it to episode two, so that's an achievement in itself. We're still in lockdown, unfortunately, but I think less than three weeks to go now. So uh, the uh, return to golf in England is getting closer and closer. Obviously, I still can't get out on the golf course to try any clubs out. So today I thought we'd look at a practice device from uh, back in the day. Uh, I'm talking about something that's probably familiar to anybody that's looked at old magazines from the 60s and 70s and that's a device called the swing right three um, practice training club this was sold in very large numbers uh, around the world um, it was developed by a wing commander mindy blake there's a name to conjure with uh, who developed it while he was posted overseas to enable him to continue uh, practicing golf. Uh, we'll have a look at this club. Uh, I've got one here, and it helps to have an example. And you can see it looks very much like a, a wood, um, except it's a plastic head. So if you did try and hit any balls with it, you'd likely to do some damage to the club and it wouldn't last very long at all. Uh, we'll look at it closer, um, I think, from the last video I learned that it's not very um, helpful if I'm just holding a club but waving it around you can't really see it so we'll look at it a bit closer looking at the, uh, the head itself it's a, a piece of plastic made in two parts with a fixing screw on the bottom there and two at the end so you can take it to pieces on the top we can also see the power setting here this goes from 0 to 4 if I can catch the light on that correctly you can just about see it there on the bottom we've got an original um, design label sticker, a few patent numbers and where it was made. The shaft itself is quite interesting, um, got a, a caution label there, do not hit the ground and it also says here taposcopic shaft because the, the shaft is actually uh, tapered. We've got probably just see the, the, the break point there. Um, this one seems to have seized up uh, because I can't get it to collapse into the shorter length where it would fit snugly into your golf bag. Coming back to um, Mindy Blake though uh, and the development of the club, he initially invented it, invented it in the early 60s I think. Um, the original model was a little bit simpler than the, the Mark III uh, in that it, it didn't return the, the weight uh, setting which is part of the device. You had to do that manually after each swing uh, and the Mark III also has a swing speed uh, adjustment setting so you can vary um, the, the swing speed required to activate the club. The Swing Right 3 was uh, not called the Swing Right in America because I think that name had already been taken by a, a similar device for uh, baseball. So in America, they called it the 19th Hole Swing Trainer and Exercise Club. Bit of a mouthful, I'm not sure um, who came up with that snappy name, but that's what it was sold as. Perhaps why it didn't sell as many um, as it could have done in America. Uh, Mindy Blake was one of the uh, typical lone inventors of the time working in his shed I imagine uh, to come up with this design and perfecting it over a number of years. It, it basically derives from the fact that Mindy Blake was a great practiser, he, he lo loved to um, do as much practice as he could and he wasn't happy just swinging a club um, when he wasn't at the course and he developed the swing right to simulate the um, the sound and the impact reaction of, of hitting a ball. It does this quite well, as you'll see later when I, when I demonstrate the club. Mindy Blake suggests that you use the club to develop your swing or any swing changes. And he recommends that to do this, you should work in front of a mirror and swing the club a few thousand times a week, um, which is, is a hell of a lot of practice. Uh, I mean, I, I've used it uh, occasionally in the garden and after a, a few swings, you, you do start to feel it. So doing a few thousand in a week um, it takes some uh, dedication, believe me. OK, I'm bubbling away uh, far too much uh, as usual. So let's go and have a look at the club in a little more detail. OK, so here we are in the back garden. Let's give this a few swings. I've got the power setting on a pretty low setting. I'm not sure if that's a reflection my slow swing speed and the fact that it's got a, a little bit old and rusty over the years. Let's see if I can get it to the fire.
there we go that's uh, as much as I'm going to do today on that uh, I hope you get the idea of how it works and I hope the wind noise wasn't too high that uh, it drowned out all the noise but we'll see in a moment when I play it back that's the swing right three then uh, a really uh, good piece of kit I think it's due a, a return I'm surprised somebody hasn't uh, reinvented it or, or started producing them again because the, the feel of the club is, is really good I'd like to finish today just by saying that if you are interested in classic golf clubs, um, there are a few websites where like-minded people will meet. Uh, there's a Facebook group called the Persimmon Golf Society, uh, which has got a lot of people on, and they also organise occasional games um, where you can turn up with your classic clubs and uh, play a round of golf in a, a sort of a, a, a casual competition. Um, so I'll put, I'll put some links in the uh, bottom of the page for these uh, additional sites. There's also one if you want to get your clubs restored, an uh, excellent site co called the Retro Golf Workshop. Um, you can also get Hickory Clubs restored there as well, so I'll put a link up for that too. Right, well, thank you very much for watching again, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.